are Strider knives tactical blades. Um, I did a video a while back, kind of deconstructing the term tactical, and I kind of I poke a little fun at it uh, because it's thrown around so often, and you know what does it really mean, and and this this and that. But I mean, if you really get into Emerson knives, you get into the core of what a tactical blade is. And it's, it's not a joke. It's really, it's not a joke. If you look at the history of Emerson Knives, if you look at the history of the CQC-7, the uh, CQC-8, um, you'll see that it's serious business. It's, it's not some mall shop owner who says, how can I make a badass looking blade for 13 year olds to buy? It's not. It's, it's a serious consideration for the needs of people to own um, basically a secondary defensive weapon, you know, and trying to design and implement the best possible defensive blade, folding blade, out there. And that's what Emerson stands for, that's what they got into from the very beginning, and that's what they're known for, and that's what they've succeeded at. Um, so for, for the point of this video, I'm going to use the word tactical. I am. Even though, you know, I have my reservations about that word being thrown around and things like that. I'm going to use that word, and that is simply just an easy way to define that concept of a legitimate knife designed for a defensive or offensive um, capacity. You know, that's what it's meant for. Um, so the question I'm posing here, so now that I've defined that, um, is our Striders tactical blades? You know, uh, a lot of people consider them to be tactical blades. I would have to say absolutely not. Uh, definitely not designed as tactical blades. Like many things, they can be used in that capacity. You can use a lot of uh, household implements as a makeshift hammer. That doesn't make it a hammer, but you could use it as a hammer, you know, moderately successfully. Uh, so in that same fashion, you know, things are interchangeable. You could use this in a tactical fashion. You could use this in a utilitarian fashion. But what I'm kind of talking about is the primary design objective of that knife. You know, was it designed to be kind of used in a tactical role? Basically a weapon. Is it used to, to be used as a weapon or is it designed to be used as a tool? And Strider knives have always defined themselves as being tools, folding tools for multiple uses, primarily a cutting tool, obviously being a blade. And a lot of people, uh, for some reason, think Strider promotes them as being tactical. Uh, but if you even look at their main slogan, it's high speed tools for hardcore individuals is their main slogan. They've never defined themselves as being weapons or tactical or anything like that. Um, it's always other people outside of the arena. And I think part of that comes from their uh, quote unquote, you know, kind of badass attitude that they portray and they live by and things like that people automatically assume that that's aggressive and defensive and offensive and things like that. Uh, but I would like to say that they are not at all. Um, Strider knives are designed to be tools. Um, and there's a few indicators that kind of lead to that. One is, and probably the primary, primary, <laughs> primary reason is uh, deployability. Uh, the concept of high speed and fast deployment is not an objective of Strider knives. Um, and that's both in terms of the pocket clip. Some people complain the pocket clip is too stiff, too hard to get out. And their response is basically, their primary objective with these knives is to keep them in place and prevent them from being lost. You know, whatever you could possibly think of to use this as, they try to make this as strong and robust as possible to handle that but they don't design it to make it super fast. They don't design it to say, you're confronted with an enemy, you gotta pull this out, we're gonna design it so that it's super quick to do that. No, that's not their objective. Their objective is, you know, this is a tool under situations where you know, hey, I need to perform such and such task, here is my tool that I think will work, and you use that tool. Something like an Emerson, you know, obviously the most prolific is the Emerson Wave. Um, I mean, this is designed so that it can be in your pocket and you can have it out and deployed in a blink of an eye. Um, that is a very specific design feature of this knife. Um, one thing that is different between these two knives is strength. Uh, the Strider knife is definitely stronger than an Emerson. Uh, you know, 
the build mechanics of it, the single piece of G10, the very simple construction with the uh, overbuilt and reinforced hardware, the supersized pivot, it's all meant for high stress tasks such as you know prying. Of course, you know prying is never the primary function for a knife like this, but they definitely design it so that if you had to, um, you could use this in that fashion. You know, the primary function of this knife is a cutting tool, but uh, they definitely acknowledge the fact that if something else were to arise, they're going to try their best to allow it to function in that capacity. Something like this is not really thought of. That's kind of thrown by the wayside. You know, I mean, it's definitely a strong knife, and they do things to make it uh, more robust than a lot of knives. Uh, it does have a larger pivot than most. It has four screws holding this thing together. Um, you know, thick liners, thick liner lock, thick blade stock, uh, things like that. But primarily, it's designed for ergonomics and not just ergonomics in terms of it's comfortable but ergonomics in terms of your ability to manipulate the knife you know the balance Emerson's are all very well balanced um, they're meant that you get a good good purchase on here and you feel confident in this knife and you're able to manipulate it in a defensive fashion um, striders are a little more clunky you know they're, they're not really meant for that they're designed to be uh, mechanically sound over being comfortable and nimble and lightweight and easy to manipulate uh, like a Emerson knife is. Um, so very different in a lot of its uh, design features. Next up is things like blade steel. Um, people complain about the steel used, uh, the 154CM uh, steel used in Emerson's as being outdated or too soft, things like that. Uh, but it definitely fits within the design features of this knife and its intended use. You know, it's, it's meant to handle shocks. Um, and that's everything from the washers that are used. Uh, you may notice if you take an Emerson knife, you will get a little bit of movement um, as the washers kind of compress and move around. That's not a mistake, you know, it was designed that way so that it can handle shock and impact uh, because this is meant to be driven basically into somebody primarily. Um, so edge retention is not high on their list of importance. What is important is they don't want this thing to break or snap and they want it to be able to absorb shock in case you were to hit bone. Um, in case you were to hit a belt buckle, anything like that. They want this to be able to take it without breaking, uh, chipping, snapping in half, cracking. Um, so it, it's a very kind of organic, fluid, shock absorbing tool. Something like a Strider, they place much more importance on things like edge retention and things like that because it's meant as a cutting tool. Um, you know, the importance for them is that you can cut a lot of stuff without having to resharpen. Um, whereas the steel may not handle the impacts that something like an Emerson can handle. It doesn't need to because it's not meant to work in that fashion. It's meant to work to cut um, and possibly pry as well as I mentioned before. So I think if, I mean, if you look at the knives and the history and, and kind of what they're going for, you can see that they were designed for different purposes. You know, and I think it's important for everyone to kind of look at things like that when they're looking at a knife because, you know, I think a lot of people want knives to function in multiple capacities, you know, and that sounds really cool, right? You know, obviously if you could get something to do many things, but the problem you run into when you try to do that is you make compromises. And so you end up with a knife that can do both, but it doesn't do either extremely well. Um, so both of these knives do what they were designed to do extremely well, but they may not function in the other aspect as well as some people would like. Um, Emerson knives might not work as cutting tools as well as some people would like. And Striner knives may not work as defensive tactical blades as some people would like. Um, so I think it's important to kind of keep in mind that, you know, they weren't designed to work in that fashion. So you kind of need to define what 
you're wanting out of your knife and then pick the knife accordingly. There are some that do great middle of the road stuff, you know, obviously, in fact, I would venture to say most knife makers try to head down that medium line to try and appease to both thoughts. Um, because frankly, most knife enthusiasts don't really need a knife that excels amazingly well in either fashion. I'm not out fighting guys. I don't really need a uh, knife designed solely for fighting. I also don't necessarily need a super hardcore cutting tool. Just a regular cutting tool is all I really need. But I just love knowing why these knives were designed and I just get a kick out of uh, having them and owning them and carrying them and, and such. So, Alright guys, that's it. I've talked long enough. Take it easy. Later.